to do it. There's no other way. There's no way around. There's no easy way. This is my will, and that's how it has to be done. Jesus found that in that moment it was difficult and it was hard. Even though he knew the will of God ahead of time, he said now was the time. He knew what was coming, and at that moment he could not do it. He said, "Pray with me." The spirit is willing. I know in my mind. I know right here what I have to do. In my heart of hearts, I know what I have to do. But oh, I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through this hardship. I don't want to go through what I have to go through. But I see down the line where they're going to take me. And they're going to whip me. They're going to beat me. And they're going to crucify me. They're going to nail me to a cross. He knew it ahead of time. He said, this is the will of God. He said, I'm not ready to do it. Come on, raise your hand if you've been there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you've been there. Yes. Let me raise both of my hands. Yes. But when we get in that situation, what we have to do is Jesus gave us the example. He went back and he prayed. He, he, first of all, he saw some friends. Pray with me. Pray with me. Don't, have, don't we do that sometimes? But what we're doing, we're praying, and I will prayers this here. Oh, I didn't mean to go this long with my goodness, I feel it. What we're doing, we're praying. Help me pray that God can find another way. Help me pray this off. Help me pray that it'll get easy. That's what we're praying. See, we're not praying, help me to get into the will of God. We're not doing what Jesus did. Oh, pray for me that we can get my father to find out easier way for this to be accomplished. And we're praying and asking people to pray the wrong prayer. I'm going to get an example. Years ago, I went this one lady. She asked me to pray with her about something. I said, yeah, I'll pray with her. And I can remember I went home. It was that night. The next night I went home. I was praying. And when I began to pray for her, God said, don't pray. God said, simply said, don't pray. And I remember, resoundingly, don't pray. But he was doing let me know it's not my will. What she's asking for is not in my will. And so God was simply telling me, don't pray for it. And when I told her, of course she got upset with me. <laughs> I'm just a messenger here. But the thing is, is that this is what happens. We have to pray for the will of God. And many times we ask people to pray for us on things that's truly not the will of God. And that's what Jesus was asking for in the beginning. Y'all pray with me. Pray with me. So he went back and he prayed if it be possible. That's the first thing he did, found somebody to pray with him. But then after we come to a realization, and I, listen, and I've been there too, we come to a realization that nobody, nobody can help me with this, this one thing. Nobody can pray for me. It's not going to get any easier. There's no other way. So God, help me to get in your will. Help me to, 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 to get what I want, my desires and everything else, into your will. So he went back and that last time and said, the Bible said he prayed. And he prayed earnestly. No, he wasn't dealing with a natural thing here. It was a thing that was on the spiritual side, on the inside of him. The flesh was at war because the flesh don't want to suffer. The flesh don't want to go through. The flesh don't want the hardship. The flesh don't want to be alone. The flesh was, he was struggling with it because he knew his time was, it was up. And so he said, Father, I need some help. Yes, and he prayed that third time. Yes, that let my will be decreased. As John, John said, John the Revelator, mm -hmm. he said, Father, he said, let me decrease that you might increase. I want my will, my desires, I want them to be squashed. That I can get into the will of God for my life. And so Jesus prayed that third time and said he prayed with an earnest this time. He prayed so hard that sweat even to fall from his head and fall to the ground. Like great drops of blood that he sweated so hard. He would put everything he had into it now because he wanted that greatly to be in the will of his Father. Since we ought to be doing the same thing when we say, God, not my will, but your will be done. When we find out that my will is clashing with God's will, we find out that I don't want to suffer, I don't want to sacrifice, I don't want to go through. We got to pray that much more against ourselves, against our flesh, against our desires. We got to pray against ourselves that God will get me under control. And you know what? And it's not you then. It comes a time in the garden of Gethsemane when he prayed so. The angels came down 
come from heaven and begin to minister unto him and to Jesus was able to say, now sleep on. I'm ready to go ahead on now. It's not my will anymore. I know I'm going to have to suffer. Oh, that's all right now. I'm going to fulfill the will of God. We got to pray it until it happens. Somebody said, pray until you get your breakthrough. That's what it is. So be it. But whenever it takes, and whatever it takes for me to get into the will of God for my life, let me do it. Let me do it. Anybody in that quandary right now? Now, I just feel like God put this on my heart this day for a reason. I was praying over on Friday, here at the church Friday, and God put that on my heart. His will, saints. Are you in that quandary today? I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand because I know somebody out there is. God only gave it to me. If you feel like it's that hard to do God's will, put more of yourself into God. It's not you that's going to do it. The closer you get to God, the easier it's going to be to make the sacrifice to get into the will of God. It's going to be that much easier. Now understand this on the back end of it. Once you get into the will of God, and you're fulfilling the will of God, it may be hard right now. It may be hard at this moment. But life is so much easier when you get into the will of God. Because then it's no longer I. It's the Christ on the inside. He's the one that does the work. I don't have to worry. It's there all hours of the night trying to figure things out. I don't have to worry about how things are going to turn out. If I'm in the will of God, I already know everything's going to be all right. It may not be the way I like it, but it's going to be all right. Because I am in the will of gosh. Hallelujah. Because I'm in the will of God. Saints, that's what it's going to change. How many willing to say, how many are willing to attack yourself? How many are willing to attack yourself so you can get into the will of God? Now, you say you have to attack yourself. Oh, yes. I, and this, I'm not just talking today. I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. And you can do it, but you got to get out of yourself. Pray yourself down. Fast yourself down. Stay and work against yourself that the flesh might be brought under control, that the will of God might be fulfilled in your life. God bless you, saints. I hope you got something out of this one today because it's the will of God. It's the will of God. You move all ahead of the prayer. Thank you, mothers. In the prayers of the mothers, call for the morning and the coming. I didn't say morning, I said moan. The morning and the cutting women. And they will take off a little bit. Hallelujah. They're going to get a word from the gods. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, mothers. And nobody God hears nobody else. He hears those mothers. Trust me on this one. He hears those mothers and he hears those children. Thank the Lord for you. God bless you. God bless you and God keep you. Again, very quick, we got announcements. Uh, nothing's coming up today, so we don't have to worry about this. We just kind of commit the announcements. The saints, let's